All right, folks. Hello, and welcome back to another quick UE5 short tutorial. And in this tutorial today, I'm going to be going over some uh, efficiency tips um, for any and all UE5 projects. Now, this is super important for any kind of creator using uh, Unreal Engine 5. And the reason is because when you're dealing with a project that has, I don't know, maybe a dozen or two assets like this, you know, you won't really get lost in the abyss. You know, it's not it's not challenging. You you know where everything is, you know, I mean, like it's easy to, to select things as well as to, you know, reorder things and do anything that, that you want to know. But when you're dealing with a project sort of like, um, I don't know, a, a forest, uh, maybe not a forest, but more a city, definitely. And you have thousands of assets. That project will be so much more easier to navigate if it was um, if it's neat rather than just being sloppy. And so we're going to be going over some, you know, some some tidying up uh, tips um, that I personally use. And that is definitely recommended by Epic because they understand that, you know, a, a neat project is one is main more, is way more uh, visually um, uh, uh, pleasing on the eyes because it, it looks professionally done um, and it's also just easier to work in. And so let's get into it. So one of the things that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of inside of Unreal Engine is the grouping uh, feature. So let's talk about, about grouping and how it works. So to group something, you just need to um, select one um, uh, mesh. OK, so then just to be clear, a mesh is, is, is just in reference to a model. So I, I could say either or, you know, um, but yeah, so you, so you select one mesh and then you select um, you could select however many messages you want. There's like no limit as far as I'm aware. Um, and then what you do is once you have both uh, messages selected. Now, also, let's pay attention to this pivot point, right? Because this pivot point is going off of the last selected um, objects pivot point. So you see, if I select this first and then this second, then the pivot point is over here. So it'll rotate along that axis, you see from that uh, origin point that's like in this cube, right? But if I do this one first and then this second, you see how it moves. So, you know, it's going to be on whatever the um, last selected object is. And that's the one that's like way over there. So if I was to select one, two, three, now you, you see where I'm going with this. So that's that's very important um, because sometimes, you know, you'll be going to move a group and you'll be like, wait, why is it rotating so far out? And then, you know, you'll know why. Um, but yeah, so what you do is you select multiple meshes and then you hit, um, you right click. So you select whatever groups that you want to make, right? So you select them all and then you um, right click on it and then go down to group. And as you can see, it's a shortcut is control G. Now, when you have things grouped, this thing appears in the outline is called a group actor. Now, if you were to um, click on it, it highlights everything in that group by default. So if you ever see like, um, well, a group actor <laughs> and you want to know what's uh, what's actually in that group instead of, you know, trying to find, you know, the object that's in the group, select the multiple objects. You can just straight up select the group at, uh, actor inside of the outliner and you'll be good to go. Now, this is great because, you know, I could rotate these at the exact same time. And now, of course, this is just for tutorial purposes. I didn't want to open like a demanding project just for this one tutorial. But I mean, when you're dealing with things like, um, big projects that have thousands of assets. Now you can, you're talking about literally being able to manipulate um, hundreds, if not thousands, depending on how big your project is, but at least, at least definitely uh, dozens, if not hundreds of different assets at once, you know, it's just, it's just so much neater, so much better. It's just, it's just it really is. And this is, this will really uh, go a long way. Um, and as well as not only can you group actors, but let's say I wanted to rotate this but I wanted to um, move just this one. So I wanted to just move this one cube. And let's say I wanted to put it on top, but I didn't just want to do something like that, right? So if I wanted to move this one cube, but I still wanted to keep the group, there's a feature for that. All you have to do is right click, go down to groups, and you can click unlock. This will enable you to, and you can tell that it's unlocked because uh, the group icon is like red, right? So that means that you can uh, move things separately. So if I was to just select one, or the other, you can see now it is uh, moving um, singular, uh, 
singularly. <laughs> there we go. And now we have the exact uh, thing that we wanted. And even if I was to go into here, select the group actor, it's still, you know, doing what it's supposed to do, which is selecting everything in the group, as well as if I did want to start moving everything all at once again, I can just right click on it and go down to groups and go down to lock. Now, this is a very um, neat feature. I recommend using it for however small and however large your um, project is. And another thing I definitely recommend doing um, before we end today is getting inside of this outliner and organizing the life out of it. I mean, literally, it's super important to keep this organized. Um, and so because I mean, think about it, we have literally like <laughs> You know, you know how small this project is, right? But we already have like, I don't know, a dozen or, or so um, different objects already over here, um, uh, 15. And so now you, you can see, you know, 15 is definitely not a lot, but if you're dealing with something as big as a city or working on a city or working on any sort of big render or anything like that, then you're gonna have hundreds or thousands of different assets or um, actors. And so that, that's that's why you need to work on this outliner and keep it organized. And so in the outliner, we, you can actually right click and create these folders. Now I can name this folder something like um, sky. And so then if I was to select everything that has to do with the sky, so we have the directional light, we have the uh, exponential height fog, sky atmosphere, volumetric clouds. Uh, I believe I did a tutorial on how to add all this, by the way. So if you're wondering how to get all this, you know, in, then Feel free to check out that tutorial on how to set up like the sky um, in a range of five. Now, this is great because, you know, now that, it, now that that it is in a folder and it's not in a group, if I ever wanted to just hide this, you can see I could just hit the, the folder itself and it gives you complete control over everything inside of it. So it just completely hides it and it automatically hides all the others and as well as brings it back. Now, you could do something like that. For the sky, you could do something like this for, let's say, um, cubes. And I can get both. Uh, actually, I could just drag the entire group back there into cubes. And then you see where this is going. We already got some folders down. Now we can do something for, uh, let's do one for planes. Or actually, instead of just right clicking and making the uh, folder, you could also just select the, uh, the message. So let's do something for. Um, oh, there's actually another cube. Sorry, buddy. I forgot about you. Perfect. <laughs> now let's do, uh, we could do spheres. So you could do, um, we select the uh, two uh, models that you want and then right click and you should see something that says create folder. Um, I forgot where it is. Uh, move to, there we go. So yeah, it's a bit tricky. Well, not tricky, just frequently on this one part because when you right click, you're not actually gonna see create folder until you click on move to and then you have create new folder. And then you can um, name it, you know, spheres, so on and so forth. You get the idea, perfect. And now let's just actually keep going with this. We can do, um, no, I'll just call this miscellaneous. So miss, because you know these aren't um, group worthy. Like, what even is this duplicate? There's like nothing there. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> uh, there's no static mess here. See, this is a glitch. There's no static mess. I don't know what that is, but I'll put that in miscellaneous. You bet I will. Perfect. And regardless, you get the idea. Very neat. Looks so much better. Um, in in the world outliner. I mean, it's just this is how you want to have your project. That way, when you're dealing with, I don't know, ten thousand or so assets, you'll have folders and folders and folders, and it's just so much needed. Well, that's really all I have for you today, folks. I just wanted to show you some quick efficiency uh, tips that are really go a long way uh, when dealing inside of, um, of a large project and especially using a UE5 more times, um, more often than not, your project is gonna get pretty hefty in the amount of actors that you have in it. And so you're really gonna wanna make things as neat as possible. So with that said, I'll leave you to the, you know, your UE5 project. Best of luck to you in your endeavors. And you know, as always, as I like to say at the end of every video, <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult when you don't know what you're doing and that is the reason i create these videos to really help people out the same way i um you know i wish i could have been helped 